Hello Angels, it's Miss Quiet Queen, and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I'm back. Every once, every once. I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, I'm doing well. I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you everyone for who were concerned about me. Sometimes a queen just has to take a break to replenish and re-nourish and stock up on my spiritual strength, if you will. I'm sitting here just drinking some pure cranberry juice. You may have seen it on my grocery store haul. And I put a little bit of water in it. This is really good. This will get you together if you have a kidney infection or some type of urinary tract infection. It's really good. But you know, it, it, judging from the title, I want to talk about relationships as it is concerns um, with spirituality. I don't want to be too long because I do have things to do. I'm always busy. There is a, a viewer of mine. I'm not sure if she's a subscriber. I don't remember the name, so please forgive me. But she's always asking me two questions. I can't really remember the first question. I think it's where do you get your information from. But the second question is, how did you know your husband was the one? This person has been asking me this particular question for years, and I never answered. First of all, I'm the biggest conspiracy theorist you have ever want to meet. I am cautious about who I talk to and what I talk to them about, what I reveal about myself or my family. Because, quite frankly, and please forgive me for being so blunt, if this hurts anyone's feelings, I'm sorry. I don't trust you. I don't trust anybody. Um, doing this type of work, you know, being a part of the conscious community, there are a lot of individuals in um, secret societies who want to slow down or even stop our progress by any means necessary. And being cautious is just one of the ways I combat that. But I decided, you know, because it's on my mind so much, to go ahead and talk about it. Um, I didn't know why she wanted to ask. Maybe she's writing a book. That's what my inner is telling me. She's writing a book and want to know how people meet and how they can tell. You know, so maybe that's her way of doing research. Um, but anyway, and if you are, let me know when you finish writing the book. Or just email me and tell me why you really needed to know. I think I asked her once and she said she wanted to know for her own personal thing. So in case you're one of those people that want to know how you can tell the person you're with is the one for you, let me start with telling you my story. I came here in Ohio from Detroit, Michigan over 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Um, I was I was at a really low place in my life. I had to leave Detroit because so much was happening to me. I was homeless. So I left from being homeless. Last time I was in Detroit, I was homeless. So I came out here. My sister and my sister-in-law were here. And I found an apartment. But I was very lonely still. I was grateful that I wasn't homeless anymore but I was very lonely um, I did at that particular time I did not have custody of my kids my mother had them and and I was not a drug addict or anything like that so I don't think that I wasn't a drug addict I wasn't a prostitute I didn't do anything like that there's other reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video but I I, I, I was I was very lonely in sad all the time. I would even be lonely in a room full of people. So I decided that I was I wanted to change that. But then I just said, oh forget it, you know, I I don't know what to do. I began reading and studying. That's when I started getting a little bit into witchcraft. I'm not all that into witchcraft now. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I study from all different uh, religions. So I, I did a ritual <laughs> to bring whoever is with me, whoever I'm compatible with, 
I was asking my spirit team and my ancestors make him known to me and I saw this one man at uh, a grocery store he had two kids with him and I really wasn't sure if those were his children or not he was a tall man big and stocky and he was looking at me and staring at me and I was looking at him and I got something very positive from him it was a it was a a jolt of positive romantic energy and I picked up his thoughts he wanted to ask me why are you looking so mean or he wanted to say something to me and he decided not to because I, I looked really standoffish then when I got home I thought oh my god I, I wish I had said something so and the more and more I thought about it I thought that must have been him that must have been him so I was I did all kinds of rituals and meditations to to run into him again. I figured if I seen him at that store, maybe he lived in the neighborhood. But as I found out, he was just a seed planted in my path for me to do the meditation and the concentration that I needed to bring my actual husband. Now my husband he's also very tall and stocky but he didn't have any kids they kind of remind me of each other when I think about where how he looks so he didn't come around but I didn't really give up per se I just stopped trying as much and one day I walked into a gas station because my husband had two jobs he worked at a gas station that was his second job when I walked in no kidding I literally I heard bells. I heard bells or her buzzing and bzzz, me, 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 me. I'm looking around like, what is that? What is it? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What is that? Me, 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 me. Bells and things going off in my head. I heard them outside my head. I I I felt tingles. And I looked over and I saw this big old six foot three man. <laughs> Leaning over, he had big fists, and he was leaning over the counter, looking at me. I heard Kenny. I didn't know Kenny's name at the time, but I knew that was my guardian angel's voice. And Kenny said, "That's him. That's him." And I'm like, I looked over my shoulder, I said, "Who? That's who?" And Kenny said, "That's your husband." And I went, "What?" Hey, yeah. And I felt really, really, I felt really good, you know. So, fast forward to make a long story short, I told Daryl, go ahead, about um, about that day. He said, "Yeah, I remember that day. I remember you came in." I said, "Why were you looking at me like that?" He said, "Because I thought you were crazy. I really thought you were going to steal something. You were looking all around like you were going to take something." I said, "No, I wasn't going to take anything. I, I heard bells. You didn't hear bells." He said, no, woman, you're crazy. Anaya, step out. I said, no, I'm not crazy. I really heard bells ringing and I heard a voice tell me something. He said, what did the voice tell you? I said, I can't tell you that right now. We, we weren't dating for that long, so I didn't want to say that the voice said that you were my husband. I didn't say that until after we were together for over a year. But, um... He said he thought I was insane. <laughs> he thought I was going to steal something. And I went to work that day. I I, talk, I went up, to, I, I made my purchases, and I said, what's your name? And he told me, girl. And I told him mine. He said, okay, nice to meet you. And then I went to work, and I got, I, I called, I called information and got the number to the gas station he was working at. And I said, hey, this is so-and-so. I was just in there. And uh, he said, oh, yeah. I said, I wanted to give you my phone number. So I gave him my number. Come to find out, y'all, he didn't even know who I was when I called him. He said he seen so many people. He was playing it off. And then he, he finally called me. Not exactly sure who I was, but he called me. And all this time, I'm thinking he knew who I was, but he didn't. But the sun rose and set on both of us. And, um... Uh, we fell in love. We dated for about six years before we got married, and here we are. 
And that is the story of how I met my husband. Now, there are many ways you can tell if the person you're with is the one for you, but I think easier is how to tell if they're not for you. If you don't have the same values, it may not work. If you're with someone who does not believe that God exists and you wholeheartedly do, I won't say that it won't work because my husband don't really believe that, that, that a God exists. He does have somebody come over every week and they have Bible study because he asks a lot of questions. But he don't necessarily believe that there is uh, a, a God per se. And I, I respect his feelings on that because um, my beliefs of Christianity and other things are, are different as well. But if you have someone in your life that is constantly trying to ridicule you for your beliefs, if this person is um, always pushing something down your throat, they may not be the right one. You want someone in your life that you believe in the same issues. Issues, big issues, okay? I'm not talking about where you're going to place the furniture. You know, I'm not talking about thing, anything like that. I'm talking about big issues like... Um, what, what is it? Spirituality. Um, abortion. Um, how you're going to raise the children. You know, and what religion. You know, you have to be compatible. You know, if you're not in agreement with these issues like political issues, if one is a Republican or the other one is a Democrat, you still may be able to get along, but you have to know when to draw the line and stop asking questions or stop pursuing. Um, you have to be able to know that there's a cutoff point and respect each other. But if you are always in disagreement with almost everything, sometimes just good sex is not worth it. Maybe you could just be friends with benefits, you know, and not have a relationship. Maybe that's what you need. But what I suggest is that always call on your spirit guide. Always call on your guardian angels and your ancestors to see, to ask them to guide you, to whisper in your ear, let you know, is this the one for me? How do I go about finding out? You know, my ex-husband... He thought when I, I the little things that I started to notice about him to realize that he's not the one was I was always very spiritual and I wanted to us to get close so I put on some music you know some um, nature music you know with rain the rainforest type and I straddled his lap and I put my arms around him and my forehead on his forehead and I, I learned this learned this somewhere because because um, there was no internet back then and I just rolled had us roll around like this to really feel and pick up each other's energy he started laughing and pushed me off of him and said you crazy that is weird why would you do that that's that's just too weird for me and I did it with my current husband and he enjoyed it he embraced it you know he's very touchy feely but my first husband was not so when you're getting involved with someone do things like that that you think people may think oh my that's kind of standoffish and see what will happen you know do the things that you really really like tell them about the stuff that you really like to do even if you think he might think you're crazy you need to know you need to know if he's going to be all right with that you know, open up and let that person know certain things about you. Now, ladies, if you had an abortion, it ain't none of his business. That ain't got nothing to do with him. You don't never have to talk about that. That may turn a man off. Don't do that, especially in the beginning of your relationship. Okay? Men are very physical. They don't want to have that visual in their mind about you. Okay? Don't give him too much information. 
Men, women are very emotional. You want to get her heart, then you need to speak to her heart. Tell her, don't just tell her she's beautiful. Tell her why you think she's beautiful. Tell her why you think she deserves the moon in a ring. Okay? And mean it. And be sincere. Okay? You'll know when the right person comes around because you'll feel it. There's an energy that you could just feel it. I can't explain it. Like when I saw my husband standing there over the counter, I heard my angel's voice like somebody was standing right next to me. That's him. That's him. That is your husband. You know, and my friend, she said she saw that she did the same thing. She met her husband when she was in high school. He was a senior, I think she was a junior, and he was working on the stage. They were getting ready for a talent show. He walked past, and she said, I heard something say, but she didn't hear something. She felt an energy, she said. I'm sorry. And then she said, that's my husband. Oh my God, that is my man. That's my husband. You know. You know your mate. <coughs> if it's somebody you're supposed to be with, you know. Okay? Physical intimacy, it counts. It matters. But just because, you, like I said, you have really, really good... And, or he or she has good love making skills that don't mean it's the one because after a while that gets old I don't care how good it is that gets old okay you need other things to sustain your relationship okay because being married for life is a long time and bumping and grinding ain't gonna always make it okay because there are gonna be times where you can't do that there will be times where you know he might become impotent or you might become limited or you know sex just doesn't keep you together it's not the glue okay it's the bonus all right so I hope that helps and I know I haven't done a video in a long time but I just wanted to throw something up here real quick because it's been a while and I don't want my subscribers to start falling off so that's that but stay tuned because I have a lot of things uh, coming for you guys real soon all right thank you angels oh I want to say thank you to all of my new subscribers um thank you to all my old heads I appreciate y'all for hanging in there with me and stay tuned for more videos okay stay in the light